And welcome to the 72 PC Podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation in the game. Today's game is Rocket League. Big surprise. And with us, we have Eric. What's up? And we have Tom. What's up? What's up? So I see Tom wanted to spend some time at a resort, trying to kick back and relax a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's um, not too bad here, honestly. It's It's not what I expected, for sure. Uh, I was expecting like a nice kind of tranquil, lush environment, and lush environment it is, but tranquil it is not. I'm I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Um, Tom joined the call a little bit late. I was unprepared. I didn't have a background image for his green screen ready to go, so I just threw up a <laughs> Escape from Tarkov map just so there was something there. So, <laughs> and for Maybe, those who don't know, that's a map that has a resort on it. Yeah, yeah, it's the the shoreline map with the resort. So yeah, not not as funny and creative as normal, but you know, it's there. Can't always be bangers. No, nope. I mean, come Can't on, I gave you like a basically four minutes to prepare after I joined <laughs> the call. How how could you just mess this up? I don't get it. I'm sorry. It took me like a minute to sound check and a minute to use the bathroom and <sighs> a minute to sit I'm, back down and put my headphones on. I'm just hearing on excuses. And, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm just hearing excuses. So speaking of uh, uh, things that are bangers, is my new chair. Oh, I got a new chair. Chair. Yeah. Chair cam. Chair. Um, I got, I jumped on the old... Um, Secret Labs bandwagon. So I got me yes, a, a Secret Labs Omega. Tom recommended it highly. Everybody that I've talked to that's used one seems to like it. And I didn't know what else to get. So I got one and it's, and it's nice. I love it. It's it's interesting. Um, Sorry, interesting. I'm talking about this game mode. Uh, none of us have played this before. This is fucking yeah, weird. I don't even, what's, this is so oh, weird. I don't know what's happening. It's four on it's four. Football. Oh, Interesting. But yeah, uh, how are you liking it so far? Oh, I love it. And I, I'll preface this by saying that my last chair was absolutely awful. I think it was like $100 off of Amazon. And it was like starting to break down. The The seat cushion was really uncomfortable. And then it would like creak really loud and squeak when I moved. And like the locking mechanism didn't work very well. It was just, it was not good. So... Any chair probably would have been a pretty okay upgrade. Um, so I've, I've never actually sat in like a super nice office chair, like a Herman Miller or whatever. So I, I can't compare it to anything like that. Um, but it's, it's really, really nice. It's sturdy. It's comfortable. It's support, supportive. Um, and it looks pretty cool. I'm not into the gamer chair thing at all. So like, all those old like DX racer chairs that everybody used for a while. They're all too like I don't like the super flashy racing seat kind of style of chair. So all right. Um but this one is really nice. It's just all it's all black. If you can see here. Um I like that you went with the cloth. Yeah. Like I saw that. I'm like that that looks actually really nice. Yeah, the main reason I went with the cloth is um mainly just I like the way it looked better. The the standard black uh, leather ones still had like the bright logos and stuff, and I wanted something a little more, a little less like showy, I guess. Just kind of yeah, plain black chair. It's still got the logos on them in the same spots, but they're, you know, it's black on this like not fully black fabric. It's that like, you know, gray and black and charcoal kind of all woven together type of look. It's really nice. But yeah, yeah really I like slick. the I like the fabric. Um, it's not super like soft fabric, which is probably good because it means it's going to be durable. But um, yeah, it's really comfortable. I like it a lot. Um, how you got your lumbar? Do you have it like fucking bulge into my back, or there's nothing there? Um, it doesn't have adjustable lumbar. It's got this. Uh, it came with like a pillow thing. You just sit there. Oh, for some reason I oh. thought you. Oh, never mind. You got the Omega, didn't you? I got the Omega. Yeah. For some reason, my brain was putting the Omega as the um, one with the lumbar, but no, you're the one with the pillow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got the pillow in the back, which is nice. I love the pillow. The whole thing is just, it's yeah. just so comfortable. It's, ah, I'm not used to sitting at my desk and being comfortable. <laughs> right? 
Did you almost feel like you were falling backwards the first time you used the actual? Oh my tilt? god! It leans all the way back. You can you just can like, sleep in this fucking yeah. thing. Yeah. Yep. I actually did last night. Did you? I was sitting. Oh. I had a snack. I was kind of tired, but I'm like, nah, I'm gonna watch something, then probably play some Pavlov. You know, just kind of chill out before I jump into VR. And I woke up in my chair. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Oh no. Guess I'm going to bed. <laughs> Yeah, I've never like full on slept, but like I've hit super chill mode where I put my feet up on my desk, I reclined that sandwich back, and I picked up the controller and just did like some fucking Hades. Nice. I've been meaning to play that more, and I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Me too. I still haven't had a successful run. I still need to. Yeah. It's not from lack Far. of trying, though, damn it. <laughs> I mean, you could always do the. Uh, isn't there like a easy mode? Fuck no, that's that. for sissies. But so, I mean, if you really the, wanted to uh, just get in there and, and figure out the what happens. Easy mode is interesting. It doesn't actually change uh, much of anything in the game. The only thing it changes is how much, uh, how many basically rewards and like in-game currency you get per run. It just makes it way faster to progress. So you will still die, and you'll still, you know, die a lot but you'll get better at the game faster. Okay. And you'll be able to buy more things in a run probably yeah. then too, because you'll get more gold. And I do like their system of like, you have an in-game currency and a post-game currency. So like mm -hmm. you have to balance like, how much am I trying to spend for my future versus how much am I trying for this run? Which yeah. is a really nice yin and yang. Ah, well. All that said, how was y'all's weeks? Just great. Um, Tom, let me guess. I was busy. Tom was busy. How busy? Well, I took a half day off of work yesterday. Hey. That's yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's <laughs> talk about the uh, car that ended up not needing fixed, right? Yeah. So um, that, that was fun. We... Uh, and I, I cannot blame like the mechanic or the shop that picked it up or anything like that. But we uh, we had to get our car looked at because we had a yellow check engine light, which I was like, all right, it's probably something stupid. Like I loosened the gas cap or um, I. Uh, I completely blanked or like I've got a spark plug or, or something. Right. Um, I, don't, a, I don't. You got a spark. Plug. I got a spark plug. Like, <laughs> oh, no. Like, something, Bad case of the spark <laughs> plugs. <laughs> <laughs> Something really trivial, right? It's always stupid when it's a yellow check engine light. Um, so we took it out for a drive, and we realized, oh no, the speedometer doesn't work. The tachometer doesn't work. Oil temperature doesn't work. I've lost all instrumentation in the dash of my car. Just nothing fucking there. Um, so, what, uh, that was... This game mode is so fucking stupid. <laughs> what a pass. What a pass. I, I kind of like it. It's different. I was dumb as shit. Look at what is that? Anyway, I was so distracted because this game mode is so fucking weird. Um, goddamn hand egg. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, anyway. Anyway, uh, we had a mechanic come out. They uh, did house calls, which is really cool. Uh, took it back to their place, spent days on it trying to diagnose the damn thing. Turns out that it's a uh, a computer component inside the car called an instrument cluster. And this thing has um, a pretty, pretty nasty habit of just failing. And then you have to get the whole thing replaced, the entire component, which is 1500 bucks without <gasps> labor. Jeez. This is a 2013 car, right? It's, it's not like ancient, but it ain't the newest thing. And, you know, putting... A fifteen hundred dollar part plus whatever the cost to put that thing in, which is pretty substantial, is worth more That's than rough. the car itself. Yeah. So we said, "Fuck it," um, and we bought a cyber truck. We we didn't buy a cyber truck. I really <laughs> wish we bought a cyber truck. Um, Can you but, imagine uh, the Discord erupting when you post a picture <laughs> of you standing next to your new cyber truck? <laughs> right. That would have been I, the, I really su such. That would have been such a Tom thing to do too. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would have. Well, guys, I'm going car shopping. By the <laughs> way, I have a cyber truck now. No, it's funny. As soon as he pulled up the Tesla page, like Renee had a sixth sense, and boom, 
Yep. <laughs> like, no, you're not doing that. <laughs> well, that's, that's actually kind of what happened because we were looking at the cost and believe it or not, like some of the newer model Teslas aren't super expensive. They're still expensive. Don't get me wrong. They're still like nice new car expensive prices. But if you're already looking at nice new car, it's not it's not a huge leap to, you know, throw some financing on that thing and uh, get yourself your very own Cybertrunk. But then my wife, being the goddamn fucking reasonable person that she is, had to go and say, hey, Tom, um, you know, you got to plug those in, right? Y- you know that uh, that we don't really have a place to plug that in, right? You know, you live in an apartment, right? And you can't just stand up a supercharger in the parking lot. So well, she could. was right. That was annoying. Um, so we didn't end up getting the Tesla. Uh, no, we we went shopping. I thought of what he could have done is take an extension cord, run it out his window, over the roof, and back into the parking lot. And I told and her this. Fine. She said it was ridiculous, not an actual solution, and completely stupid, um, which I do disagree with completely. I think she it would be like rad a, as fuck. <laughs> she sounds like a quitter. Yeah, exactly. It's quitter talk is what it is. Um, so... What uh, what we did, we got the car back from the mechanic. They took it all apart. They put it back together. The problem went away, like all good problems in life. It just goes away after you shut it off and turn it back on. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we took it for a drive uh, yesterday, or no, Thursday night, and it, uh, yeah, problem was back. No speedometer, nothing. Not really super safe to drive. Like, we can follow traffic, but... Driving without a speedometer seems like a less than safe thing. Um, So we traded it in and we got ourselves a new Kia Forte. It is blue. It is pretty. And it stays in lanes for me on the highway. And I'm super excited about that. That's kind of cool. It looks nice and from the picture. uh, I like the way it looks. if, If you're about to like crash into somebody like head first, it'll automatically detect that and automatically stop the car before it impacts him, which is really fucking neat. Yeah, the Scions have really nice uh, safety features on them. The fucking auto lane steer is something that I did not know that they had. <laughs> so that's really cool. But yeah. I, I love auto steer. We got on the highway last night, like driving this thing home. I hit cruise control. I made sure the adaptive cruise control was set so it would like follow the car in front of me and maintain car length and all that jazz. And um, then just sat there like my hands were on the wheel i wasn't like sleeping the car but my hands were on the wheel but they were just kind of there <laughs> i wasn't actually driving the thing it was handling the the speed it was keeping within the lanes it was goddamn wonderful so yeah i'm i'm pretty happy with all this yeah that's hella nice but outside of that how was your week after that like that make you all nice and happy? Like make all day today really well? Not you, really. Go on unnecessary <laughs> trips because you want to drive your cool new car? No. I mean, so I will, I'll probably do that tomorrow. But to be real, I'm actually kind of pissed. Um, oh. Yeah. But it was, if I took it to the mechanic the first time and they said, nope, this thing is 100% busted, I'd be like, okay, that fucking sucks. But now I'm mentally prepared for it. Now it's just like, hey, your car is fine. Everything's good in the world. Oh, no, it's not. It's not. And like, they didn't give me a load of bunk. They didn't say it was fixed, but they did say when they dropped it off. Yeah, the problem went away. It's probably going to come back. So I'm thinking, all right, I've got like at least a month or two. Maybe I'll get six more months out of this car before I have to replace it. No, it was like days. You didn't have the proper expectations, but then again, no one knew. Yeah, yeah. yeah, No, it's it's no one's fault. If it's anyone's fault, it's my own for being a little too optimistic. Um, but you know, I will say that like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm an optimist when it benefits me. And at that point, yeah, believing the car was fixed did benefit me. Um, but you know, if I'm going to buy a car, if I'm going to drop like an ungodly amount of money, I'd want to get something that, you know, I actually want. And, um, yeah, this, this kind of fits that bill. I'm nice. pretty happy with it, all things considered. I'm not happy it, about the situation, but the outcome, yeah, it could have been a whole lot worse. It's pretty. It's real pretty. It's very pretty. It's very pretty. That's a really nice looking blue. Uh, we we tried to get the uh, the black because we just we always buy black cars. Um, 
we we generally have two rules: no white cars and no red cars. Red cars are ticket magnets, and white cars just look like shit no matter what the weather. Um, hey, white cars look yeah, really cool when they're just been washed. That's and true. For they're, like ten minutes look, after that, yeah. <laughs> I say, they look good, but by the time you put them back in your fucking garage, they look back like shit. Yeah. <laughs> I know my my dad has a white car, and it always seems to look look nice when I see it. I don't know. I, don't know well, how I think he, he said it. the operative word there. If, if he's a dad, yeah, yeah he's spending he's... at least three, four <laughs> hours a day washing and waxing that thing. Funny. Yeah, I was going to say, just washing himself like, fuck this. Um, but no, but um, hey, hey, I don't think I've get, ever uh, owned a white car. We get... I, um, I have not either. I did blue, black, black... Uh, and now blue or no green green black, buddy black. green shadow green, black, for black. life yeah i love that shadow i mean it was a screaming metal death trap and it did literally catch fire and burn down and that's why i got rid of it but until then yeah dude i love mine i fucking loved mine six cylinder in a two-door little itty bitty car oh fuck it was awesome but yeah yeah Oh, what about you, Adam? How was your week? It was good. I got the chair. Um, that, that was the highlight of the week is the chair. Um, other than that, uh, it's fine. I don't know. Had a couple of decent days. Work wasn't too bad. Nice. Didn't do a lot of video games, but I did some. Did some. Did I, some. I did hey, dim sum. Dim sum. Um, I had dim sum in so long. That sounds good. Only time I've ever had it was in the office for work. So since everything's been work from home, I haven't had any. Uh, Which is a shame. Are, uh, I've only been to one eats? place. <laughs> I've only been to one well, place, and that was it, in uh, Chinatown in Chicago. Oh, I didn't know. I, I didn't did know you... what. I didn't even know what it was. Like we just went to this place. I'm like, I don't know what dim sum is. It's some kind of Chinese restaurant. So we go in there and they explain it to us. And it's like, oh, okay. So they just like walk around with these carts of small dishes and you just point to the one that you want and then they add it to your scorecard. And if there's something you want that they don't have on the cart, you can order it. And everything is like a dollar something to $2 a piece. And you just yeah, get a bunch of them. It's fantastic. cool. It's it's a lovely concept. Tapa, tapas. Tapas, tapas, however they Yeah, tapas. that. Yeah, small plate. Mm. Yeah. Um... I did do something I don't think I've ever done before, or only like once. Ordered DoorDash. Yeah. Um, you finally we, joined the degenerate club with us. <laughs> wanted some Chinese food, so ordered some. And it was, as you would expect, Chinese food. Wasn't great. Wasn't bad. It just was. Good. It just was? Why would it that be was. what you expect from Chinese food? I love Chinese food. American Chinese food, I never expect to be like great stuff. I nice shot Tom. I always expect it to be like the sauce is going to taste good, but they're going to have shit tons of sauce. The chicken, for the most part, is going to be okay, but occasionally going to have that super fried out, dry as shit piece. And great, I was pleasantly surprised I didn't get that dried out piece, but it was a fuck ton of sauce. Sauce was fine. Chicken wasn't great. Like it wasn't super moist or anything. The rice was just rice. <laughs> the rice um, was just rice. They're, um, oh my God. Pot stickers, also known as, um, help me out. Fried dumplings. I can't remember what they're called, but yeah, dumplings but, um, or gyoza. If it's, I think, shrimp gy- or something. Gyozas. But um, they were pork, but they were like breakfast pork, like American what? breakfast sausage pork flavor to them, which it turned out fine. That. But weird. it was weird. That sounds weird. Yeah, it does. He didn't go with the crab what? rangoon. Um, I didn't see Crab Ragoon on their thing. And I don't know if I'd want that carry. Like, it took our driver for fucking ever. So, like, I didn't want cold Crab Ragoon. So I don't think that would be too tasty. Eh, it's fine. Idea. I yeah, actually, I really <laughs> like leftover Crab Ragoon straight out of the fridge. Yeah. It's really good, actually. See, I like it more that way, I think. Food? Is I never have leftovers. That's, yeah, that's admirable for sure. I always order enough for like three meals though. 
I just get like my get chicken, like, a rice, and gyozas. I get like multiple entrees. Ah, uh, okay. I usually get orange so, yeah, chicken. I get some beef lo mein, and um, either pot stickers or crab rangoon. I've never gotten That's my go-to. Ever beef, beef lo mein is really good. I would highly recommend it. I'm a General So's guy, and if I don't yeah. go General So, I go um, orange. Yeah, I will do mugu most often. I love me some mugu guy pan. I don't even. I, don't know, what even that know, what that I mean, I've heard it, but I don't know what it actually is. Um, do you think like the same kind of chicken that's in like chicken and broccoli? It's a kind of that thin like, wave, like thin wavy chicken, but with a uh, reduced white wine sauce. It is fantastic. Oh, interesting. Right. If you that's like mushrooms, different. like I, I get it without mushrooms, but if you like mushrooms, that's like one of the centerpieces of the dish. Okay. I like me some mushrooms. It, that was something yeah. I didn't develop a taste for until yeah. I got older. Yeah, I didn't like mushrooms for a really long time. I, I only like mushrooms. I only like morels and I only like them breaded and fried. So I mean, as with everything breaded and fried, it just tastes like fucking Obviously. breading and oil. <laughs> There's a little flavor in the middle excellent. there. <laughs> Which is excellent though. Like, okay. Yeah. So growing up, like country ass family, my we would have pumpkins that we'd grow in the garden. So a pumpkin starts as like a blossom or a flower, and then it develops into a full-scale pumpkin. We would harvest the flowers. They just look like a big fucking maple leaf, but they're orange. And like, so we're talking this like the consistency of a maple leaf. Bread it and fry it. So yeah, we find okay. any excuse to fry anything, and they were delicious. And to be redundant with the not good for you stuff, you would butter a piece of bread, throw a fried fucking leaf in it, and then roll up that bread and eat it. Huh. it was weird and delicious. <laughs> but yes. Huh. Anyway. Um, I don't know what to say to that. Yeah. I realized as soon as I said, I'm like, oh, you guys are completely dumbfounded. So anyway. <laughs> uh, fungus. Game? Fungus. Games, y'all, no. y'all, y'all, y'all games, game? y'all game it up. Any game? No. I'm just trying to get the show moving because at this point I'm like, fuck, I just put brakes on this thing. N- now I'm just trying to make it harder on you by not talking. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking hate okay. It. So I have a you correction. Have to coax it out of us. Uh, a correction about Hitman oh, Two levels yeah. in Hitman Three. So they were all like there, and I thought I could play them, and I'm like, oh, I feel like playing Miami again, which is one of the more famous levels of Hitman Two. Uh, it says get access now. So, um, okay, apparently they're still working on that feature. They have the progression, so they like have all the stuff that I unlocked in Hitman Two, but I don't have access to the levels yet. So, uh, oh, that's weird. Yeah, um, they are working on it. They are going to make sure that people don't have to buy it. They promise, but you know, as of when I played it last, like earlier this week, uh, it was not yet available. So, yeah. Well, I I'm okay with it's not there yet, but we intend on it being free. Intend on it being there. Like I, I appreciate sure. that, and I'm fine with that for sure. Yeah, I, like, I don't granted, feel bad at all. Granted, I'm not someone playing the game, but the idea of it being like we just don't have it yet, but you are going to get it sounds mm-hmm. fine. Especially yeah, since like, hey, we just released a brand new game, and you're looking for content we released like four years ago. Give us a minute. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm totally fine with it. Um, I do have access to all the Hitman One levels though, because if you bought the game like within ten days of launch or something, so I waited like seven for all the reviews to come in. Um, you do get access to all of Hitman One's content, so. I've got all that to go through too. So it's not like I have a, a lack of content in this game. So you keep talking about this game's gonna make me fucking pay for sixty dollars here. <laughs> yep. just get it. I really, really like Hitman. It is like it's not the world's best stealth game. It's not amazing. It doesn't have the best gameplay in the world, but it is very unique in its place. So it's a stealth game that values bullshit mischief and comedy over everything else <laughs> like hey do you do you want to dress up like a street performer play drums and you know murder somebody while they're just watching your set yeah you can do that do you do you want to poison your target so you know they throw up and go to the bathroom and then drown them in a the toilet yeah you can do that too like 
just have <laughs> fun and it's all a bunch of stupid bullshit it's untitled um, goose game but you get to play as a homicidal bald guy uh, yeah, like Untitled Goose Game feels more like a Hitman game than most Hitman games. <laughs> so I, I love the we don't take it serious. We're here for the fun. Like Ooh. this is a video game. We're not going to be self-serious. We're just going to let you enjoy it. More yeah. games need to be like that. It's it's definitely that way. Like um, there's if you haven't seen there's and I know you guys have seen it. There's a bug in uh, all these modern Hitman games with a briefcase. Um, you can throw a briefcase at people to knock them out. Um, the issue is that if they run away during your throw, it will home in on them. Like the briefcase will be spinning in air, making like just slowly flying through the air, following these people. Like if they got in the car or a jet ski and jumped around, like just started moving, the briefcase would just follow them. <laughs> it's a bug. The devs said it's a bug. The devs also said, yeah, we're not going to fix this. People think it's hilarious, and so do we. <laughs> One of my favorite ones that. was the guy, you, someone chucked the briefcase. Dude jumped on a jet ski, did a complete <laughs> circle. It was following him the whole time. He gets off the jet ski, off about right where he got onto it, and then the briefcase gets him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just silly as shit and awesome. I, Speaking I of think silly you would like shit, it, man. This... this this game mode i know we brought it up briefly this is good this is interesting what the fuck is this game mode i kind of like it. football obviously like you, you're carrying the ball NFL until logo? you flip and when you flip you pass this is how the super bowl is for this year right <laughs> yeah that's how they're doing it with rc cars you know if this was the super bowl i might actually give a shit <laughs> what about who's, the puppy bowl by the way who's playing the super bowl isn't it buccaneers and somebody some buccaneers and in kansas city okay so Tom Brady is going for yet another fucking ring. Which team is he on? Buccaneers. <laughs> okay. I root for the Buccaneers because they have the cooler helmet and logo. I, I want Kansas City just because they have my old coach. And, you know, yeah, that's enough for me because I love Andy Reid. Yeah, but the, the Buccaneers awesome. color but, scheme and logo, it's so cool. Unless you go back to like the mid-early 90s. Yeah, those, that, that one was crutch. awful. I hated that one. That was hideous. Uh, why are we talking football? Fuck football. I, don't I guess know. we are playing football. We are, we are playing football. Yeah. Yeah, this is a what? weird ass mode. What? This is a I just, weird ass mode. I just got hit without a bound. If you take the ball to the ceiling, it just drops yep. off you and you hear a ref's of wish, whistle. Whistle. Yep. Whistle. Whistle. Uh, also, but, the seven and three points is interesting. So if you chuck it into the goal, it's a field goal for three points. If you drive it into the goal, that's a touchdown. I have not been paying enough I, attention to notice that. Yep. Yeah, I, I really like it. I thought you did <laughs> notice it because every time you threw it, you ended up catching it after. So I thought you were oh, understanding no, that you were was, advancing the ball and recatching it. No, that was entirely an accident every time. <laughs> Your entire accident was actually a really good fucking play. Um, but yeah, so I actually jumped onto something today that I was kind of craving and I'm shocked that I played. Um, OG Roller Coaster Tycoon, or on I Steam saw, called I Roller saw that. Tycoon I was Classic. like, oh, that's kind of <laughs> different and interesting. Like, I, I, I knew you were a fan wanted... because you left a copy of it at my house for a long time when we were younger. It, it's what happened when we were younger. I don't think I really hung out to you until I was actually an adult. But when we were younger, <laughs> we were younger because I still lived with my parents. I was never yes. younger. But um, I mean, not for a couple thousand years. <laughs> Okay, Tom. But uh, yeah, so I was in the point where I'm like, do I want to play Planet Coaster? I'm like, I, I would enjoy it, but I don't feel like trying to learn a game, and I don't know Planet Coaster well enough at this point. Mm -hmm. So I booted up Classic, and it's interesting. I've realized that, A, the mechanics of how the game controls, like moving the screen and shit, dude, it's archaic. Like, I jumped on, and I'm like, okay, WAS, what the fuck am I doing? That's not moving the screen. <laughs> Arrow keys, my um, man. Uh, but yeah, it was weird because I'm realizing I'm not playing it the way I used to. Like I am playing it a hundred percent. Like, okay, I need to get guests and make money. So I'm doing nothing but thrill rides and general rides. Like I'm not making nothing but roller coasters anymore. I'm actually playing the game in a way where I just use all this pre-built shit just to get everyone in so I can make the fucking money. So then I can eventually make something big. So I'm trying to check all the fucking boxes so I can get to the new levels. 
because everyone knows like loopy landscapes is where the real content of OG Rolex Tycoon started, which so would have been the um, second expansion. So do you, do you see yourself playing it more lately, or is this just kind of like a one one day thing? Like ah, I, I don't know. I just it just kind of felt right. Like I almost booted up instead the Jurassic Park um, Park Creator instead. Like I, I had that kind of thing. Like I almost bought Dyson Sphere Project today just because I wanted to play something like that. By the way, if no one has looked at that. I was going to say, what is um, Dyson Sphere Project? So um, Epoch, uh, Dave, also known as around the community. Um, he was playing the game some on stream. Some people in his Discord server are playing it. It is Factorio meets the... 3D projection of a world of planetary annihilation with total annihilation type of graphics in Factorio gameplay. It is just insane. And what a fucking pass and score. That was good. What a <laughs> pass and cool. score. <laughs> Tom with the big <laughs> passes again. That was actually that was, really cool. That was a great that was read really big cool. Papa. <laughs> but no, um, so it's like a Factorio game on 3D planets where it's a procedurally generated u- or a galaxy, not whole like no man's sky universe but so you have all these different planets you have to harvest resources on and get them across to make all these factories like in an entire universe or galaxy so it's doing like planetary annihilation kind of stuff with no man's sky stuff with the base gameplay being that of factorio and they're planning to make it also rts elements so you know there's always resource management and rts's imagine factorio level resource management inside of an rts and that sounds like the potential ambition when it's done right now they got the factorio end of it down it sounds like uh, epoch it sounds like humans can't do the actions per minute necessarily (laughs) necessary to do an rts and keep track of all the resources and stuff it sounds fucking awesome is what i just (laughs) heard um but he said right now it's like 30 hours of content and it's pretty much all factorio based. Like they don't have any RTS kind of stuff in there yet or base mm-hmm. defense. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, I hope they pull it off because like this sounds like the dream game for me. Also, speaking of, um, it's not in news or anything. Did you guys see there's a new Warhammer coming out? I did. Like this might be the time that I finally do it. Like I've always said I'm an RTS guy. I've always bitched about the genre's dead. And I've always willfully ignored the fact that there is a monster franchise still in the genre that I never talk about because I don't want to take the dive and try to learn it. It might be the time that I take the Warhammer dive. Because Microsoft's letting me down and has given no information on the New Age of Empires. Planetary Annihilation just shit the bed on it. And the Warcraft remake was dog shit. So this might be the time I finally say fuck it. I'm going to do me some more hammer because that's supposed to be like an incredibly complex RTS, which, which sounds like something I would like. I'll be honest with you. I, I know the name Warhammer. I knew it was a game, but I didn't know it was an RTS. Like that's how little the, I knew the about core, Warhammer. the core of it is, but is there, RTS is kind of like saying forgotten realms or D and D in a way where they made an entire thing off it. Like Warhammer Vermintide 2 is effectively left for dead. Yeah, in the medieval okay. Times. Yeah, yeah. I have that. I played that. And that's in a Warhammer type universe. Or I shouldn't say type. It is in a Warhammer universe. But there's like a proper Warhammer coming out, which is an RTS, I believe. Because there was also a Warhammer Space Marines. I was going to say that I thought it was like a space thing. There's initially. Warhammer, which is fantasy based. And then there's mm. 40K. Okay. Which is Warhammer in a far off, far off universe. Okay. Like yeah. so you still get those fantasy elements, but it's more fantasy sci-fi mixed. Hmm. Yeah. And, and kinda, that's where like the, run. And that's where Space Marines uh yeah. took place was in the 40k end. Yeah. But yeah, um so I, I might actually end up taking a peek at that because it seems like it might be time. But maybe. Yeah. I, I just you kind of like have it. the management end like that's that's why it draw me to roller coaster tycoon but yeah i i'm enjoying it i will probably play some more of it tomorrow because i love roller coaster tycoon that was one of the games that i spent a fuck ton of time with as, as a kid did you guys do much rt or roller coaster tycoon as a kid 
Um, no. Roller coaster really. tycoon, no. I was always on the Maxis side of the house. So yeah. Sim theme park. Sim theme park, Sim Get City, Sim Tower, Sim Town, Sim Ant, Sim Earth, Sim Copter. I had all the shit. I played Streets of Sim City, motherfucker. I was hard into Maxis. So Sim City is one of the best Sim Gates ever made and clearly set the standard. Mm. That said, Sim Theme Park is dog shit. Sim Theme Park was bad compared to everything else, but it was pretty and it ran really well on the PlayStation. I didn't know they put it on console. Like, yeah, I had played it on PC. Hmm. I didn't know that either. Pretty pretty sure that was Sim Theme Park. It might have been a generic theme park game. Because do you remember, like, everyone and their mother had a theme park game, like, after Roller Coaster Tycoon hit it big? Yep. Because and that's, that's, what, that's what the fucking zoo. gaming industry does. And then this, <laughs> they did the uh, offshoots, like, the zoo ones and stuff. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I shit on it. Dude, that Jurassic Park, like zoo tycoon game was really good that was a good idea like i i mm-hmm. like shoot off sometimes i like jurassic park the, the first yes. one yes G- give me dinosaurs give me dinosaurs D- you you need some of that dino dna dino dna say what it's in your blood damn it <laughs> such uh, a quotable movie it, it really is right? it act- so many so I remember uh, for our buddy uh, Brett, his birthday, we went to see Jurassic Park 3D. Like they did the 3D read thing of it. Yeah, they should not have done that. It actually looked worse in 3D. I felt than it yeah, did. It did. Standard. But hey, it was Jurassic Park, and we got to meme the whole time. So yeah, and, and that was in the era where we went to the theater that was right across from a bar. So it was just such a good like one do. <laughs> we, we did the same thing for um, uh, Interstellar. Yeah. Mm. Interstellar was so good on I <laughs> like it. on IMAX. It, it was, was the perfect IMAX. Oh movie. my god! Still one of my favorite like, sci-fi movies ever. Gina has say, a lot of disdain for how little I care to go to the theater, uh-huh. but there are some movies that I feel like that. That's when you go, and Interstellar yeah. was absolutely one of those. I gotta say, like, I know, I know comparing any Marvel movie is not going to be on the same level as talking Interstellar, right? They, there is action popcorn movie where Marvel sets, and then there's like really cool kind of highbrowish sci-fi where Interstellar Interstellar sets. But watching Endgame, watching the end of like the big MCU in a packed theater and getting people to... theater. Everybody's standing up and cheering when the, yeah. the, <laughs> the, hammer. Hammer. Okay. the yeah the yeah. hammer. Are, are you guys like, theater theater cheers? I'm not. I, no, I typically hate the theater. The energy is contagious. But yeah, I, I gotta I say there there are some movies that I would much rather watch in a theater. Like if 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 it's a cultural moment, and the end of the MCU is really one of those like shared experience sort of things. Uh, yeah, I will absolutely go to a theater for that. Oh, no, no, no. I'm saying a cheer, like someone who will cheer and clap in a movie theater. So at no. the, the theater I was in, when the thing happened, and again, I'm being extremely vague because spoilers, and I don't want to spoil anybody who hasn't seen it, but when the thing happened, the entire theater erupted <laughs> into applause and cheers and gasps, and it was, it was fucking great. I don't get it. I I've also never been... I also saw um, Young Frankenstein in theaters because uh, there was like a, a theater in Dayton that had a Mel Brooks like three day weekend, and we got tickets to all that shit. So we watched a bunch of classic Mel Brooks stuff, and it was fucking great. And people were you know laughing and cheering and hollering in the theater, and it was it was great. Was it the Danbury? No. <laughs> No, it was like it was like a legit theater, like theater. Okay. theater. Oh, um, theater. Yeah, theater. Well, it's a theater. Yeah, but that feels uh, like yeah, a it was, it was cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, a, a theater really is just a concert for a movie. So I guess the cheering on a super crazy part isn't too outlandish, but I mean, not I just, like obviously not every movie, but. Also, like, if you go to a really good horror movie in theaters, and I I did that with um, A Quiet Place, it's great. I watched that recently. That's a good movie. That's a great movie. movie. 
Um, but it was great because you're sitting there and then like everybody gasped at the same time. And then some people are screaming and then, you know, you can hear like the small children crying. And I take that back. That part is just the <laughs> small children to R-rated movies. Um, <laughs> but, See, but I'm the guy that la- oh, not quiet place. Quiet place was done differently. But in a lot of horror movies, like I'll laugh at this shit. Yeah. Like I'm in that guy in the theater laughing and no one else is laughing. Like, well, fuck, I feel like a creep. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Yeah. But no, um, I'm just, I I felt Interstellar was like, in my lifetime, it'll probably be the movie of all movies where I hope someone saw it in theater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But either way, that that was a hell of a tangent from uh, Roll Coaster Tycoon. (laughs) Yeah, kind of. So, so um, I guess while we're speaking of uh, space with Interstellar, um, I could talk about this game I played today and yesterday. Um, it's called Observation. So Observation oh. is a sci-fi adventure puzzle thriller kind of cosmic horror thing going on. Um, so it starts off. Uh, this crew member named Emma. Um, un- some unknown event happened on the ship. She wakes up. She can't get a hold of anybody. The whole ship is spinning. All the systems are offline. It's just things are going crazy. So she boots up the 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 space station AI. Um, very much how nine thousand kind of vibes, two thousand one, the space odyssey sort of thing. Um, All right. So she boots up this AI on this this like, it's like the ISS, but not just us. Like it's a multinational ISS kind of thing. Um, so so you boot up the main AI, and she's trying to get like systems back online. Um, the AI loses basically access to the whole ship, so she has no way to contact anybody. She doesn't know if the other crew members are even alive. Um, and you play as the system AI. Oh, so she she gets you online and you can look through the cameras in, in the area that you're in. And by basically zooming in on things within the rooms, you can start to reconnect all these little pieces back into the system. Like, um, you know, reconnect a hatch so that you can actually operate the hatch and get to a new area. And then you're you're doing a lot of working with Emma where... She'll like repair the whatever that gives you access to the life support systems, and then you can use that to check the status of a certain area. And then you gotta, you know, activate the comms stuff and try to contact the other members. It's it's a lot of um, kind of. I mean, the actual gameplay itself is a little bit mundane, I guess, because you're basically just operating the cameras and interacting with like the various interfaces of things to get them to work um so it's like a lot of light puzzle solving following the instructions of emma and you know slowly uncovering what's going on on the ship and it gets weird i was not ready for this um it well it has to do something if you're playing kind of through cameras yeah, pretty much. Like this, this isn't the type of gameplay I would normally like. It's it's really slow. It's a lot of, um, I don't know, like like little puzzles and, and stuff like that. But the way the story is going, it is very um, kind of weird, dark sci-fi. I don't want to spoil anything. Um, I'll, I'll spoil a small part of the prologue. So this is something you'll see within an hour. So you're, the ship is in low Earth, low Earth orbit, and you're getting all these systems online, and you finally get to the point where Emma's like, all right, Sam, I need you to access the exterior camera so we can see if we've moved or whatever. And you access the exterior camera, and it's Mars. Or not, sorry, um, it's Saturn. You're literally in oh. Saturn's orbit, within a super small time frame and it just gets like this weird i i don't know like cosmic horror existential trippy stuff starts happening and i don't want to spoil too much more than that 
That sounds kind of cool. It, yeah, the, the actual story and narrative have, has absolutely gripped me. I was playing this basically all day today after we stopped playing Tarkov Urk, and I was approaching basically the ending, and then we had to get ready for the podcast, and and honestly, let's wrap this thing up so I can finish this game because <laughs> I'm like super into it. it it's cool. checking all the narrative boxes. I love like space oriented sci-fi kind of thriller horror stuff. I love trippy, weird, mind bending, what's going on kind of stuff. Um, the game absolutely nails the atmosphere. The ship is claustrophobic. Um, the, the visuals are really nice. The sound design is incredible. Um, the whole thing is just kind of off and unsettling. It's just, it, it takes a lot of cool boxes and it's unique. I've not played anything like this before. Hmm. How much was it? Uh, well, I, it's twenty five dollars if you want to buy it, but it is on Xbox Game Pass. Oh, really? It was, yeah. Ooh. You just got Tom to play it. <laughs> so I had never, I'd never heard of the game. I didn't know. Like, apparently, it's pretty well received. It got some BAFTA awards for stuff. Um, oh, nice. But I was watching just like uh, I watched a bunch of zero punctuation videos the other day just for fun. And in one of them, I can't remember which one, but Yahtzee mentions observation and that he quite liked it. And I was like, oh, well, Yahtzee doesn't like anything. So if he, <laughs> he quite liked this, I should at least give it a shot. And I read the description of the game. Didn't think it would be something I'd really be into. Even like the very beginning of the game, because it is a really slow game and it does take a little bit to, to really ramp up. I was playing like the initial gameplay stuff and I was like, oh... I don't know. We'll we'll stick with it and we'll see what happens. And then some story beats started happening. And then I was like, okay, I have to know what happens next. I have to know where this <laughs> is going. And then more story <laughs> things happened. And then more story things happened. And I got sucked in. I got absolutely sucked in. And then in. the podcast happened. And, and then the podcast it, happened. And now I'm I'm all antsy. We just we just ruined it. Completely it got, ruined the vibe. It got, <laughs> it got crazy. And then it was time to to podcast. So but yeah, so now um, here we are. Observation is really cool if if you if you can enjoy the gameplay. If you're the type of person that can enjoy that type of gameplay, the story is, I think, so far very worth it. Even if I don't even know what's going on yet. Um, yeah, Xbox Game if, Pass, big plus. If I had Game Pass, I would check it out just because that sounds like an interesting. Like maybe not beat the game per se, but I would check it out just because that sounds very interesting. Mm -hmm. Like for a gameplay mechanic of like you are the system like mm -hmm. the thing you're normally fighting against and fighting with like you are it yeah yeah d reading the initial description of the game i'm like okay so is this going to be you know your typical rogue ai scenario is this going to be whatever and then it's like oh you play as the ai interesting that's a new perspective even you, even you just uh, starting to describe it i thought that's what was going to be yeah that's exactly. like, oh, yeah i mean like, that's always uh, where it goes AI that's classic 2001 or... a space odyssey that's that's like a trope i guess yeah. that can still be done well like not that there's anything wrong with a game that does that but yeah i mean it, it's it's a trope because like it just in itself lends to pretty easy decent storytelling mm -hmm. and they do a good job of making you feel like the ship ai because you're always looking through the cameras cameras will glitch out sometimes um you, you know your movement's limited and then a lot of like there's a lot of interface gui overlay stuff that comes up when things are happening and cool. um when you're interacting well, with the systems and stuff so your point of view is the part that i find interesting like yeah it putting you strictly through cameras like that's mm. actually a really cool way to do it yeah it's like there's security cameras that is all you get to see for the for the most part um there are sections of the oh, yeah, game I where you get to use like a little camera drone thing where you can like actually freely move around um, but yeah, a lot, of, a lot of the times it's, you know, you've got your main like overview of the station where you can, you know, click on what room you want to see the cameras of on various, you know, wings of the thing once you start getting the ship systems put back together and you can like run diagnostics and um, check on, you know, like crew statuses and, and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's good. That's cool. Sometimes I wish I had Game Pass because you keep you and Tom keep coming up with like these interesting games where it's like I don't want to buy it because I don't yeah. think it's something I would I, enjoy. I wouldn't have spent twenty five bucks doing on something it. novel. Yeah, yeah. 
I need to just do Game Pass and get through some of this because, like, I still are they still there doing is one game I want to buy. Are they still doing the I trial wanna... for like a dollar? Is that still a thing? Don't fucking shame me. <laughs> that was a thing. Shame. Yes, I think it is. Shame. Yes, I think it is. Eric, it's I will. Fucking... I will give you a dollar. Just do it. I'll give you a dollar right now. The I'll last give... time <laughs> you gave me something gaming related for a buck, I sunk like a hundred hours into it. <laughs> yeah. Fucking bind of Isaac he gave me for the because I bought him a Gatorade. Well, I mean, if you like this game, I'm pretty sure the whole game is like eight to ten hours long. So you're it's not like a huge investment. Oh no, I know, I know. It's um, a short ish game. I want to play the Outer Wilds. That's my big one. So I, I mean don't, I know that's on you there. mean the Outer Worlds? Oh it was. Outer Wilds. I thought the Outer Wilds was on Game Pass. No, it was on yeah. Epic. Or not Epic. Um, Yeah, Epic. It was on Epic and now it's on Steam. I'm pretty yeah. sure Outer Wilds and Outer Worlds are on Game Pass. See, I thought Outer... I thought I know Wilds Outer Worlds is, Worlds is, for sure. Because that's where I played it. Um, like, I, I could I, I bought Outer, Outer Worlds. I bought Outer Wilds on Steam, so I don't think it's on Xbox Game Pass, but unless they added it recently and, are, and I'm mistaken. We'll see at some point, but yeah, at some point I'm gonna have to get this because Microsoft's putting all their shit there, and I'll buy Halo regardless. But I mean, when it's the, a really good value. Yeah, mm-hmm. eventually I'll want to play through all the gears again, and when I want to do that, I'll get it. Probably what'll end up happening, because I don't care what anyone says. Gears is an underappreciated franchise. I really liked it. It really helped define the cover shooter genre. Fuck yeah. all you haters. I mean, at this point, it it might be like a, the Seinfeld effect kind of thing, right? Like back in yeah. the day, that was kind of the innovator of the chest high wall, you know, cover shooter thing. And now it's been done to death by tons of different games. And at the time it was original, but as people have experienced all these other games, maybe, you know, le- less people are into it these days. Yeah. I didn't play five before. A, the story was pretty good. Uh, B, they actually introduced elements of their horde mode into the actual campaign in a really cool and interesting way. Hmm. Which I thought was something also pretty cool. Of like, let's take an RTS, or did I say RTS? Holy shit. Let's take an FPS and let's start putting other mechanics into it, which I thought was fun. But yeah. Um, so, observation. I think that sounds fucking rad, and I want you to beat that so you can tell us about if it was a good payoff or not. It's already worth it. I mean, I don't really care how it ends at this point. I have had we'll endings to games like retroactively ruin the good ass time I had with the game. Maybe. I don't know. It seems weird enough that I could see the ending maybe being one of those endings where like the events of the game wrap up but you don't necessarily know why or what mm. or what it meant kind of thing yeah mm-hmm. which honestly was control is kind of that way too but i still loved it you love throwing shit with cyber or with mind powers oh yeah that never got old ever <sighs> uh, well. what else have you guys been playing this week um, um i did a little more slap shot that game's fun still, and more Dota. So how's your, I mean, that's how's your Dota me. games been going? Eh, um, eh. I won five in a row, which was kind of nice. Helped bring it back up. So that was really cool because I played a fuck ton this week. Last night was a little bit of a shitter to end the night, but yeah, yeah. like okay, we had we had three games which. I think maybe even only one of those was good. So the first three games, we won. And only one of them was a decent game. The other two wins were just fucking stomps left and right. Mm-hmm. Like, like, don't get me wrong. They were fun, but it was... It was kind of like... Was, the other team was not enjoying it. No, yeah. it was it was kind of like having a boxing match, adult versus toddler. Like, <laughs> it's fun, and it's cool to see him cry, but at the end of the day, you're not really fulfilled by it. <laughs> yeah, that's wow, one man. way to put it. Sure. Yeah, normal, uh, I don't think stuff. I can re- I can't relate, but continue. <laughs> I mean, I've never boxed a toddler, but... <laughs> oh, you're missing out. It's really great. <laughs> um, 
but the the last two games of the night were just fucking awful. Like, I don't know, probably the worst games I've had in a while. It, like, I usually don't end a match by reporting somebody and then begging the other team to also report my teammate, but that's what oh. happened last night. We had a true... Like, he wasn't even being a jerk. He's just a but shit one of, It was one of the few times where someone was deliberately playing... It felt deliberately playing in a way that was detrimental. Oh. Yeah. Without communicating. So it was just so like he was all out <laughs> awful. Okay. Yeah. Like, I don't know how to put it in parallels to other things. He was doing things that a player yeah. with more than five hours in the game would know not to do. Yeah. Oh, huh. So he's trolling and without it, using the chat to let you know that he's actually yes. trolling. It was, and it, it started was before the game, before the game even started. It started, oh, which yeah. was the horrible part. So like we were fucked. <laughs> so you were locked in. Yeah, we yeah. we were fucked. How long did that game go? Forty five minutes. Longer than it should have because we pulled out some fights. Yeah, like it was, it was goddamn terrible. And these these are the worst moments in Dota two and. I wish they didn't happen this way, but like sometimes, you know, negative two minutes into the game actually starting. It's going to be a ex- shit game. Scott's exact words right after the draft. I wish we could leave here. And drafts <laughs> is when you're selecting your heroes. He's <laughs> yeah. like, I wish I could just leave now. Is like, that this not the first thing that happens? Yeah, it's the absolute first thing before the game even starts. Then you how draft. did you know that he was being that way? So when you draft in Dota, you, you've got a, a view of the map, you've got a, your list of heroes, and people can, like, show who they're going to pick. So mm-hmm. we all showed, and we said, mm-hmm. we're going to go these heroes, we're going to do these lanes. And this guy said, nope, I want this lane, and I'm doing this hero, which doesn't really work with your lineup. Oh. Like, everyone's already picked. And then he did something that did not, do, like, there's people you can go, it's like, you know what, that doesn't make sense, but whatever. This is one that was detrimental. It's like, it's impossible for this character to be played with what we have mm-hmm. in a way that's going to be good. Yeah. So he just and, wanted to play a specific character just to play a specific character. And he didn't care about without, anything else. without any form of communication. Like he could have said yeah. at the very beginning, Hey, I'm doing this. And we could have adjusted around him in a way that, okay, it may not have worked great, but we had a chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've done that before. Like somebody says, Hey, I want to go mid with this person, or I want to do this thing with this character cool, we'll rebalance our lineup. Like, there's four of us and one of you, but that's fine, buddy. We'll rebalance our lineup to suit your preferences. <laughs> and I, I don't feel like as negative as that sounds, but that is what we do. We generally mm. generally play around the randos that we get because the four of us can easily communicate with each other. We can't super communicate with this guy. Mm-hmm. And because of what he did, though, it forced me to take what I was doing and play it in a position it was never meant to. It took yeah. Scott to take something he was doing and play it in a position he was never meant to. And we were the two heroes that were supposed to really be the ones that carried us to victory. And because of it, like we were in a situation where we could never do anything. Yeah. It was just, there was a lot of weird technical shit, but from the start of the game, we knew it was awful. Yep. Which is first time it's happened to me in weeks, but God, it sucks when it happens because you're locked in for 30 minutes of this is going to fucking suck. Yeah. Mm. And then, then he yelled at me about like what abilities I was taking with my hero, which I generally follow. You know what's appropriate in the situation. He's like, "What do you mean you don't have this ability?" Like, a, it wouldn't have saved you anyway. You literally ran into the enemies alone. And B, I don't know what you think this ability does, but it doesn't save you from being a fucking dumbass. And I'm, I'm going to pull this back a little bit from Dota just so people get an understanding of how annoying this guy was. It got so bad where this guy was saying, hey, why don't you have this? Why don't you have this? Tom went out of his way not to get it at the very end, <laughs> even when he should have been doing it. Yep. Like wow. Tom eventually got to the point where he was playing the complete asshole just to fuck with this dude because yep. this guy <laughs> fucked us that hard. Wow. Thank you. I think you guys are getting absorbed into the toxic environment. I mean, no, 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 no. Dota? Yeah. If you, if you were to watch the voice comms, you would understand, like, okay. It's like if a team, what it saves you, and it's, you know, let's say they score the first three goals, they want to save you. You come back and score four. They don't say anything. 
they scored the fourth to tie and they would have saved you again. <laughs> It'd be like what is saving them when you win it in OT in the fifth goal. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's one of those things. But uh, I don't want to get too much more into Dota. Just oh my god, last Fuck night Dota. Stuck, and we're hoping to five man it tonight to make it better. We'll see. Yeah, I know. don't know if I'll be there. Ah, uh, damn it! Tom. I've I've got a bunch of VR shit to play. I've got dinner to cook. Uh, like there's there's a lot of stuff I've got to get done. I was gonna get a bunch done today, but I needed to deal with stuff, so it didn't really work. But either way, Tom, you got some other games on your shit. Talk about them. I guess. Okay, so um, doing some more Beat Saber. I'm gonna try to get the uh, gonna try to pump up my exercise numbers because right now they are rookie numbers. I'm gonna try to get a half hour every day. So yeah, you're also competing with Beat Saber tonight, Eric. Dota can fuck right off. Um, <laughs> you don't. You don't mean that. Yeah, I. I do. I'll play it tonight, but I do mean that. Anyway. What? Did this guy really just... Hold on, hold on. Okay, side note now. Did this guy really join a Rocket League game, say anyone want to trade, I got two black markets, anyone, and then leave because no one would trade with him? Um, okay, so goes yeah. across all gaming. Communities suck. Ours doesn't, but a lot of communities suck. Fucking hell, man. He also, he said, I have two black markets, and then he typed anyone, and then immediately left. Like, he didn't even wait for a, a, a decent response. It's Jeez, like you're asking fuck, a question, man. you're like, fuck, I'm out anyway. Yeah. Like, we're, we're trying weird. to play the game, we're not trying to trade. If you would like to trade, there are places to do that, that aren't right the fuck here, right the fuck now. Yeah. And I never you understood see, that because... Anybody that's ever wanted to trade, like they're looking for a specific item and then trying to trade for that item. This guy's just like, do you want to trade? Like trade what? Yeah, are dude, are we just going to like start? Uh, yeah, it's like, I don't know. How, how do you do that? Like, do you just. How many, how many fucking pigeon toppers do you want? <laughs> I, I want to mean the next person that does that. I mean, if somebody just wants to trade in general, do you just like put up. Like, all right, here's all the best stuff I have, and you can put up all the best stuff you have, and then we can start. Oh, I want this, and I want this. I don't know. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it Fuck at it. all. Anyway, Fuck. Beat Saber. So, trying to pump up my exercise numbers, I decided, or I uh, decided to go break a record. Um, my longest standing, like, max Beat Saber record was around an hour and a half. Uh, I did two hours, eight minutes, and 50 seconds of straight beat sabering uh, on Wednesday. So, Oof. breaking records and hearts left and right. That that probably didn't feel pretty the next day. I actually felt fine the next day. I shouldn't have, uh, yeah. but I felt great. The only time when it hurt was when I was doing my, my half hour of required beat saber the next day. But, um, yeah, it honestly wasn't too bad. It's kind of weird. Your body's nice. adapting. Yeah, I guess. That's what you want. Um, but yeah, let's see. Other stuff. Um, played a little bit of Half-Life 2. Uh, I am still going through all the Half-Life games again. Um, so put a couple hours into that. Uh, it's still great. Um, and then also finishing up my third playthrough of Half-Life Alex with the dev commentary. Uh, yeah, it's neat. There's a whole lot of dev commentary about the Jeff chapter, um, which is really, really cool. That was so you cool. Get, uh, <laughs> you get some introspection on uh, like the stuff that the devs tried and didn't work and the things that they needed to pull off and how they taught players, how things worked. Like It's it's really cool. If you're interested in game design at all, um, it's fantastic. I would love to watch more stuff like that. Yeah, that was I'm, such I'm, a cool chapter that I even know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Game design's interesting. Yeah, I can't imagine how long it took them to come up with that. Because, like, the entire mechanic of that section was really fucking cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they, they go into everything from, like, here's the original design of Jeff. If you have the uh, the final hours of Half-Life Alex, they actually have pictures and videos uh, of the old model. So it's been great for me because I'm a Half-Life fanboy. Read through the final hours, scrubbed through all the videos a few times. Um, 
and now I'm going through Alex with developer commentary, and I know exactly what the devs are referring to. They're like, well, yeah, originally we built this robot and had an LCD screen with a face, so you can know if it heard you or not, but that's just seemed kind of arbitrary. Um, they walked into like, hey, here's what we tested, which sounded like a great idea for players, but it ended up being way too fucking spooky. And <laughs> this is Half-Life. It's not supposed to like cause you to like openly weep inside of your VR headset. It's just kind of <laughs> supposed to be, you know, scary. So we had to tone these things back and make this thing work. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, originally, they were going to have it so you could uh, set traps and get um, uh, I scored. Anyway, uh, they originally had it so uh, <laughs> you could set traps and have Jeff run around and kill other enemies inside the facility. But apparently players were confused and thought, oh, I have to make a lot of noise and shoot all these people and then try to get away from Jeff. Um, so, yeah. Play oh, that would have been, <laughs> been cool. It would have been cool, but apparently it didn't work for the majority of players. They didn't understand what they were supposed to do. So there's a whole lot of playtesting that Valve does in all of their games. And if you ever wonder, hey, why doesn't something work this way? They've probably got a pretty good reason. Because they can't count to three? Yes, that's generally the reason. Um, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah, yeah it's cool. But that's all that I, uh, that I played. That's it. No more. Nothing else. I, I don't have anything else to add. Oh, I guess Tarkov. We played Tarkov, but that's kind of been the, yeah. the staple talk about game every I, podcast yeah I, I did stuff i've never done and it, i'm starting to do a lot of hideout shit since i'm work from home i can just do a lot of like hey make this while i'm actually working pop in there for two minutes get shit set and then go back to work it's kind of nice it's awesome i like it but yeah that's it um anyone any other games i might have forgot about um, to talk about not really i mean i, I, like I downloaded it. more <laughs> I downloaded Insurgency, Stans Insurgency Sandstorm with the full intention of playing it this weekend. And then observation happened. Yeah, It, it was free like for a, the weekend. It looks like a slightly more realistic COD. It, yeah, it's kind of more, more tactical. Um, a little slower pace. Not quite like Rainbow Six kind of thing, but a slower paced version it, of COD. Yeah, it's like I a little bit of CSGO, a little bit of Battlefield, maybe a little COD. With like, I guess Battlefield's probably a better parallel than COD. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Seemed okay. cool. I did like the tutorial section, but nothing, not enough to really talk about. Or. Oh, you actually did start to play. Yeah, I booted it up. I did the tutorial just to see how it felt in general. It's weird playing a different shooter when you've only played one shooter for a little while. Like it always feels weird. Just like just the mechanics in general. The general feel of the game and felt weird. Yeah. Oh, I, I get that. But it seemed cool. I don't know. We're good. Sound design is pretty I, good. I, I, I thought about downloading, but I was like, eh, I got other stuff. But speaking about shooters, COD had some fucking impressive ass numbers to round out the end of the year. More yeah. like the, impressive ass numbers. A <laughs> <laughs> hundred million players a month to end out 2020. That's like a lot you of players. Need players. 85 million of those coming from Warzone. I was about to ask how much is Warzone and how much is uh, whatever one they're up to now. So as much Cold as we War. made fun of Activision for the idea of where they're just going to keep cranking out new titles, get people to buy every year. They did really good with Warzone and a lot of people seem to really like it. And they are so active at fucking theaters on it. I've I've got I've got a question about that because I, I get the feeling that Warzone operates a lot like Dota 2. No one likes Warzone. Everything I read about Warzone is, is extremely negative and how the game is just broken and the worst thing in the world. And God damn it, you guys want to get together and play some Warzone tonight. Um, I don't know if people <laughs> like it or if it's Stockholm Syndrome. Same really? with Dota. I don't know if I like it or if I just feel like I can't get rid of it. Squeaky wheel syndrome. I think it's a lot yeah. of it. Probably. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I yeah. never did try out Warzone, and I kind of wanted to because just looking at it, it seems like it seems like it would be fun. I don't have enough hard drives, but I also don't care enough to actually try it. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm going to be honest. I think COD gunplay is some of the best feeling gunplay I've ever played. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying most realistic. I'm just saying, like, it feels fucking I think they're good. objectively... I mean, they're... They're good games. Like, it is yes, polished it's to formulaic, but they're solid games. Yes. If, if you want the video game equivalent of... A it's a McDonald's summer, hamburger. Summer Saturday morning blockbuster, right? It's an action movie. It's big and dumb and flashy and explosive. It's not going to change your mind, and it's definitely paint by numbers. You know, you're not going to find a more polished experience if that's really what you're going for. Like, so it's they most. Do... It's it's most of the Marvel universe. Con- yeah, uh, exactly, movies. exactly. Like, it's it's not going to blow anyone's mind. It's not going to to change the world or anything. It's not going to be an artistic vision. But God it damn, have it's going to gonna be. be fun and it's going to be popcorny and I. That's not a bad thing. It's not what I gravitate to when I'm looking for games, but I, I would Nothing be wrong lying with if I didn't say that the, the most recent COD World War II wasn't a shit ton of fun when I went through it. Like, it's it's a fun-ass game. Is it tone deaf? Yeah, absolutely, most of the time. Is it a good time? I enjoyed the hell out of it. It's COD. They're good yeah. games. They're samey, but it's like Madden. Madden's a good fucking sports game. It's not why people hate on it. They hate on it because they just come out every fucking year. Yeah. <laughs> ah, but yeah, uh, those numbers are hella impressive. So I kind of wanted to call those out. Like by comparison, Apex Legends, pretty pretty big BR. Like the 24 hour peak right now is like 175 thousand on Steam. So it's getting good numbers. But like we're not talking war zone numbers. That's yeah fucking That's, impressive. Yeah. Big numbers. Anyway. Um Good for them. so yeah. What do we got next? We got um oh here's some not so fun news. Uh Diablo 4, Overwatch 2, some Blizzard games people were really anticipating. Well, Blizzard came out and said, Nope, not this year. Uh, so everyone waiting for the next Diablo, just stay on Path of Exile for now because it ain't happening anytime soon. And uh, if, if you would like to complain uh, about those delays, um, you can send that to no reply at 72pinconnector.com where they will be processed in the order they are received. Yeah, I have no <laughs> issue with games getting delayed. And especially given what last year was. This per- the current time is, I guess, is a better way of wording it. Um, I get it. If, uh, if you would like to see what happens to games that aren't delayed as much as they should be, uh, Play I, have a cyber, I have a cyberpunk <laughs> to sell you. <ya. laughs> no shit. Uh, okay. What else we got? Oh, yeah. Um, this one is kind of writing on the wall. I did forget mm. about this. Yep. Uh, Google Stadia shutting down internal studio. Big so they're surprise. Not doing, they're not doing their own games. And uh, let's be honest, they're probably not going to be running Stadia for too much longer anyway. Or am they, I not allowed to say that? Uh, so I am right there with you. From what the news says and from what Google says, no, we truly believe in Stadia as a platform. We just don't believe in our ability to make video games. Um, so they Which, haven't said they're shutting down Stadia. This is just their internal video game development wing. Whenever you have something like, the, in, I can't remember what it's fucking called, NVIDIA's platform, yeah. it just beats the shit out of Google's platform because guess what? You don't have to rebuy shit. It yeah. just fucking works. Yeah. Uh, but yep. they're shutting down their internal studio. Shocker. Um, and then the other bit of uh, interesting news. So there was a GoldenEye remake that was in the works. And was it for the 360? Yeah. And um, it got canned. Well, much like the StarCraft II replay that got canned for the, or the StarCraft II uh, game that got canned. There's a playable mode of it that's officially leaked. Or not officially, but it's actually leaked. So you can oh, yeah. play, or people have been able to play, the GoldenEye remake. Which Apparently, that, I, this thing was like mostly completed. Like they had a full single player. They were still working on the multiplayer, which was beta quality. But apparently the whole reason it got canned is the people licensing, you know, the 007 license just weren't real interested at the time. They weren't interested in making fucking money because you know that would sell like goddamn hotcakes. That game could be garbage and it would sell like hotcake, hotcakes. I, I would have bought it. So they, even developed, games. they mostly developed a game before they had 
licensing rights. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that awesome. seems risky. <laughs> I don't know. So uh, one of the ways that you get licensing rates uh, yeah, as a yeah, studio is you gotta you gotta build look that at vertical this thing slice, we made. Right? You, yeah. you gotta say, hey, look, all we gotta do is get your sign off on this piece of paper, and we will push this thing. I look at how great that. it is already. Yeah, I guess well, it, I mean, it's, it's GoldenEye, right? Like it doesn't have a bazillion dollar budget. This was a GoldenEye remake that was going to be on Xbox Live Arcade. I, I don't get it, man. I you're talking the game that effectively modern like it is. It Halo is the modern genre maker. I feel Co or GoldenEye is what led to Halo. GoldenEye is the reason that the genre made it to console successful. Exactly, like GoldenEye was the start of FPSs for consoles. Yes, without GoldenEye, there is no COD. I can't help but think that like, they still would have done really well based on nostalgia alone. Yeah, I would have bought like that shit. That game could have been dog shit and it would have sold like hotcakes. I, I don't dis or I don't doubt that at all. And I will ask this: Have you guys played GoldenEye in the last ten years? Yes. Don't. No. Just don't. <laughs> I haven't played Dude, a lot that of GoldenEye. Period. Theme? Period. But. That control scheme, oh my god, it aged Dude, so awful. I remember that. I remember thinking that control scheme was garbage when I played it, like when it was. I thing. loved it when I played R aiming, baby. You hit R and you get a fucking free aim. That's the way to fucking snipe. Did uh, did you guys ever play um, Domino nope. mode on Gold? No, nope. no Domino. No nope. Domino. Because, right? nope. I don't know. I had three other friends. Fuck you. No, fuck that. You can play single player. Who does that? And anyway, I, we usually play with two people in, uh, what is it? It's like golden gun mode. So two people, yeah. golden gun. Um, and we did domino mode for those controllers. It, they literally built dual stick aiming into a Nintendo 64 where those controllers only had one stick. Because you would hold two at the same time. You would plug in both controllers and use one analog stick on each to get that dual analog movement and aiming. And it was so fucking good. Like, don't get me wrong. It was still awkward as hell. And it doesn't feel great today. But back in the day, that shit was just choice. <laughs> yeah, I, nah, I'm, I'm good, dog. Because, like, what? Your options are joystick one, joystick two, trigger one, trigger two. Yeah. Well, you also have A and B buttons on both controllers. I do different things. That would be so hard to use, though. It got weird. I'm not going to tell you it like, wasn't weird, but it, it felt nice while you were playing. Wait, for those of you too young for the 64, to be able to use a joystick on the 64, your hand had to be in a position where you couldn't really use any of the other buttons. Like, mm -hmm. you could, but, like, you would have to be stretching in really awkward ways. Oh, it was definitely awkward. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. But, no, I I want a GoldenEye remake. Like, even still, today, I would love that. I think that would be so fucking fun. Those levels were designed in a way where these aren't supposed to be realistic-looking levels. You're in a fucking pyramid that has a damn tomb that go or like column that raises and falls to allow access and deny access randomly. Like that was awesome. This level level design like, first, immersion second for sure. Yeah. Exactly. Like they didn't give a shit about immersion, and that made the gameplay feel great. A lot of those old odd games were job. like that. They had oh. a character in himself that was job. a fucking cheat code. Yeah. We, uh, uh, so GoldenEye kind of kind of gave birth to the multiplayer house rules in my house where no other game we really needed them. But GoldenEye was like, all right. Um, no odd job. No odd job. And Tom has to play Jaws because he's too good. Because Jaws was the opposite. Jaws was a big ass character that gets shot six ways to Sunday because um, he was just so fucking massive. So they made me play odd job. Yeah, or that, that game is so Jaws. The thing we always did that was uh, custom is we would always have a... You said you do a golden gun. We would do proximity mines only. So yep. you never knew where or what room was going to kill you. But you had to run around to get these mines knowing that the next door you entered would probably kill you. I loved, um, <laughs> I loved doing that. But what you do 
is you put a proximity mine on a box of ammunition and then you pick up the box of ammunition because the proximity mine then becomes invisible since it was attached to the box. But the object is still there, so it can't explode. So the next time somebody picks up the box of ammo, they blow up. What we would do is we would uh, stack mine on mine on mine on mine on mine Just around the, the corner. Whole... Yep. That way, once the person turned the corner, they had no doubt, like, oh, I'm dead. And then boom. Because yep. <laughs> we were jerks. Ah, but GoldenEye, old game. Ah, oh, I think we've ranted enough. Do you guys have anything else? No. All right. No nope. well, right, domino mode. To wrap this up, I'm going to play the end of observation. Adam's got games to play. I got pizzas to order. Let's I've get got this food shit. To cook. What kind of pizza are you going to order? Uh, it's going to be stuffed crust, Papa John's, because their stuffed crust is oh, pretty fucking good. I got one and it was awful, but it's because I think the Papa John's near me is awful. Ah, uh, I don't like Papa John's across the board, but I do like their stuffed crust. I, I tried the stuffed crust. Hut is far superior. Yeah. So I don't know what they're doing with their crust, but it is like paper thin and floppy. Ooh. Oh. So I picked no. up a piece of stuffed crust pizza. So if I'm holding it like this by the crust, it flops all the way completely vertically <laughs> to the ground and all the cheese and toppings slide off immediately. Oh, come it was on. awful. That's the worst. I have experienced the floppiness, but it's not paper thin for me. I think the floppiness might be because they're trying to adjust how they cook it. Maybe I don't know. I yeah, I don't. But I also don't mind it. Like it's not soggy, it's just floppy. So I don't mind. But yeah, that's what I'm going with. So for those of you um on our Twitch, thank you. Uh but you can always go to our YouTube. It feels weird just doing this out of the blue. Um <laughs> 72 pinconnector.com. We have all our podcasts here, some other random clips and all that kind of good stuff. If you're watching us there, come to our Twitch, which is twitch.tv says 72 pin connector every Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Be part of the chat, be part of the games, just kind of chillax with us. If you want to follow us on Twitter, we we, we have one of those. It's 72PC underscore official. If you want to join the Discord, that's really what you need to do. If you don't want to join it, you should want to because that's where all the cool people are. Big community, lots of different games, a lot of friendly people always looking to do different types of shit. So you should just join that. And if you're wondering, well, Eric, how do I get a hold of that? Go to 72pinconnector.com. You'll find yourself that there. Link, click it, join it, enjoy. And that's all I got. You guys got anything else went out? Yeah, the best advertisement for our Discord, we have a cute pet pics channel. You can see everybody's cute pets. It's amazing. That it's not just cats and dogs. And I'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. get in there, check out those cool pets. But that's all we got for you guys this week. So till next week. Game on. Bye. Bye.